Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So, now my dearest royal watchers, grab your cups of tea because today we need to talk about the most delicious, most absolutely spectacular news I've heard in ages. King Charles has finally, finally done what we've all been praying for. He shut the door right in Prince Hollywood's face. Can you believe it? The puppet prince actually thought he could waltz back into royal life after everything he and that Z-list manipulator have done. The audacity! Let me tell you, darlings, when I first heard this news, I nearly spilled my Earl Grey all over my commemorative coronation china. Our King Charles, who we know has the biggest heart, especially when it comes to his children, has stood firm and said no to Harry's pathetic plea to return. And honestly, it's about time. Now, my beloved royal watchers, you know I've been following the royal family for over three decades. I was there watching little Harry grow up, and let me tell you what we're seeing now. This sad, whining, completely manipulated shell of a man. It's like watching the world's most tragic puppet show, with Madame Montecito pulling every single string. Oh, and don't even get me started on the timing. Isn't it just fascinating how these please take me back daddy stories conveniently surface right when their Hollywood careers are crashing faster than Megan's credibility? I mean, those Netflix millions aren't going to last forever, are they? Especially with their lavish lifestyle and her designer wardrobe that somehow always manages to look like it came from the bargain bin. You know what absolutely kills me about this whole situation? the sheer nerve. After everything they've done, the Oprah interview, what a load of calculated nonsense that was. That ridiculous Netflix wine fest. And don't even get me started on spare, more like should have spared us all. After all that, Harry actually thought he could just pop back into royal life? What did he expect? Oh yes, Harry, please come back. We've so missed your wife's constant complaining and your betrayal of everything we hold dear. Let's talk about the real victims in all this. Our beloved late Queen Elizabeth, God rest her soul, who had to spend her final years watching this circus unfold, and of course, the absolute saints that are Prince William and Princess Catherine. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how they've handled all this drama? Pure class, absolute dignity, getting on with their duties while Harry and what's-her-name were busy throwing the entire family under the bus from their California mansion. And speaking of Catherine. Oh, my darlings, has there ever been such a perfect example of how to be a royal? While some people, cough, Montecito cough, came charging in like a bull in a Givenchy shop, thinking they could modernize the monarchy in five minutes flat, Catherine has shown us what real grace looks like. She didn't need to tell everyone how royal she was. She just is royal in every single elegant move she makes. But let's get back to this delicious rejection, shall we? King Charles has finally shown us that enough is enough. You can't spend years trashing your family on every available platform, making up ridiculous stories about everything from racist royal babies to violent brotherly confrontations, and then expect to be welcomed back with open arms. The monarchy isn't some kind of revolving door for failed Hollywood wannabes. Oh, and can we talk about the absolute state of Harry these days? Remember our charming prince, the soldier, the one who used to make us all laugh? Well, look at him now, reduced to being a background performer in his wife's never-ending Poor Me production. He's gone from Prince Harry of Wales to the Duke of Defeated Dignity. The transformation is just heartbreaking. Or it would be if he hadn't brought it entirely on himself. You know what makes me laugh the most about this whole situation? The fact that they actually thought they could have it both ways. Keep their titles. Keep trashing the family. Keep making millions off their royal connections. And have a way back into the fold? Please, the delusion is stronger than Meghan's grip on Harry's leash. And let's discuss that grip for a moment, shall we? Have you ever seen someone so completely transformed by another person? It's like watching one of those nature documentaries where a parasitic fungus takes over an ant's brain. Our once beloved prince now spends his days in California, probably doing weird healing rituals and getting told off for using too much water on his lawn. 
how the mighty have fallen. But you know what? King Charles has done exactly the right thing here. The monarchy isn't some sort of backup plan for when your Hollywood dreams don't quite work out. You can't spend years attacking the institution, making up vicious lies about racism and mental health. Don't even get me started on that Oprah interview. What a masterclass in manipulation that was. And then expect to be welcomed back just because your Netflix deal is drying up. And let's be honest, darlings. This rejection couldn't have happened to a more deserving duo. After everything they've put the family through, after all the monies, the manipulations, the constant playing of the victim card. Well, karma really is a duchess, isn't it? Remember how they claimed they left for privacy? Oh, how we all laughed. Privacy apparently means doing interviews with Oprah, releasing a six-part Netflix series about how awful your family is, writing a tell-all book that tells all, except apparently the truth, and then having your wife start a podcast just to remind everyone how much of a victim she is. That's some interesting definition of privacy they've got over there in Montecito. Speaking of Montecito, isn't it fascinating how quiet things have been from that direction lately? Could it be that the well of royal stories to exploit is finally running dry? I mean, there are only so many times you can play the victim card before people start seeing through it. Even Hollywood seems to have cottoned on to the fact that their only real selling point was their royal connection. And now that's well and truly severed. You know what really tickles me? The fact that they probably thought this rejection would cause some sort of public outcry, some mass calling for their return. Well, surprise, surprise, the British public has moved on, darlings. We're too busy watching William and Catherine absolutely crushing it as the future of the monarchy to care about the dynamic duo of delusion. And can we talk about William and Catherine for a moment? Because this is how you do royal. No drama, no demands, no running to the media every five minutes with another tale of woe. Just pure dedication, elegance, and actual service to the country. Catherine especially has been an absolute revelation. Everything that certain others claimed they wanted to be but never had the grace or dignity to achieve. Let's be real here. King Charles's decision isn't just about rejecting Harry's plea. It's about protecting the monarchy from any more of their attention-seeking behavior. Can you imagine if he'd said yes? We'd have had front row seats to the real housewife of Windsor Castle before we could blink. There would have been Netflix cameras in the throne room and Spotify mics in the royal teacups. And don't even get me started on what that woman would have done if they'd been allowed back. Can you imagine? She'd have been trying to trademark royal return faster than you can say merching opportunity. We'd have had Sussex branded everything, the royal tea towels, palace inspired throw pillows, Archawell royal collection scented candles that smell like authentic palace air. But thankfully, King Charles has shown us that he's made of stronger stuff. He's put the monarchy first, as he should. Because let's be honest, my darlings, this isn't just about family dynamics. This is about protecting an institution that survived for over a thousand years from being turned into some sort of reality TV circus. Mm. You know what really gets me? The absolute audacity of thinking they could use the monarchy as some sort of backup plan. It's like they thought the royal family was their personal insurance policy. Oh, well, if Hollywood doesn't work out, we can always go back to cutting ribbons and waving at people. No, darlings, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. And let's talk about timing, shall we? Isn't it interesting how this plea for return comes right when their Hollywood star seems to be fading? When the Netflix millions are probably running low? When Spotify has shown them the door? When even Oprah seems to have moved on to fresher pastures? Coincidence? I think not. My dear royal watchers, this is what happens when you bite the hand that fed you caviar. When you trash your family on international television, write a book exposing private conversations, or at least your version of them, and generally behave like the monarchy owes you a living. Newsflash, it doesn't. The absolute best part of all this? The silence from Montecito. I mean, usually we can't get them to shut up about their truth or their journey or whatever buzzword they're using this week. But now cricket sounds, 
Perhaps they're too busy trying to figure out their next move now that Plan B has been so spectacularly demolished. But you know what gives me hope? Watching William and Catherine continue to absolutely shine. While the Montecito moaners are probably sitting in their olive garden plotting their next move, our future king and queen are out there showing what real royal work looks like. No drama, no demands, no Netflix deals, just pure service to the nation. And let's be honest, isn't the monarchy so much calmer, so much more dignified without all their drama? Remember the constant headaches, the never-ending headlines, the new truth bombs every other week? Now we can focus on what really matters, the actual work of the royal family. So here's to King Charles for having the strength to say no. Here's to William and Catherine for, for showing us what real royal dignity looks like. And here's to Karma for finally catching up with those two in Montecito. Because darlings, if there's one thing this saga has taught us, it's that you can't build a Hollywood career on family betrayal and expect to keep your royal backup plan. Stay strong, my royal watching friends. And remember, keep calm and support the real royals. William and Catherine are the future and what a glorious future it's going to be. Until next time, my dears, keep waving those union jacks and thank heavens we've got a king who knows how to take out the trash. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. And that's the tea for today, darlings. Spilled everywhere, just how we like it. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.